<laughs> this is very good, very clear. Very, very uh, I mean, clear. Boom has always been very clear. Yes. I I I I need to get a library oh, view. Uh, uh, Indeed, now I can see you. Yes, you yeah, like. that's right. So. Uh, I had slightly expected a different person. That's, that's no. What kind criticism. of person had you expected? Sorry. Uh, well, I thought you were lean and thin. <laughs> I was lean and thin at one point in time, yes, but. Uh, As it happens to all of us, right? <laughs> right. But you are lean and thin, and I am. Uh, no, I mean, the, I, I'm not. I mean, if you knew about my. I will have to be careful about. You know, that's, that's, that's been my goal for a while. Uh, I'm trying all sorts of different diets to try and uh, reduce. But the problem yeah, and is... I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not being serious. No, no, no. That's, you, that's, if, uh, if you're that's, happy in your own skin, that's fine. No, no, no. That's, uh, uh, that's fine. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through a few it, it, Sorry, Indigent, I wanted to ask you, is this the right uh, view of me? This is fine. You're just making me jealous of all the books behind you, though. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're, 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 gonna, you're gonna get a question. Can you give us a yeah, list? Yeah, of the I'll books tell you. Uh, many years ago, I mean, and uh, thinking about it, must have been uh, 10, 15 years ago. I had some formal pictures taken for a uh, for an essay, and the uh, photographer said, "Have the bookshelves behind you." Okay. And I always, I will always work here, so it's. I find it, you know, it's comfortable and everything's set up here. And then I see now with Zoom. I mean, all over the world, everybody is using some kind of bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> so there were criticisms, that, and then some people saying, "Oh, the books behind that just simply uh, not real books, but kind of IKEA." In the <laughs> <laughs> Ikea props. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do get them. Uh, but, uh, so a lot of people now started having something different, paintings, etc. But I have kept to it because since this is my, you know. <laughs> no, I'm in the office and this is just wallpaper behind me. So. Oh, very nice. Uh, what's that uh, crane behind you? It's just a wallpaper. That's all it is. Oh, that's lovely. Very nice. It's, it's our very office. Uh, uh, oh, very so, good. Um, very nice. So I'll not take too much of your time today because I'll- no, that's fine. I mean, I have a pleasure. Yeah. No, so one of the things that I was uh, going to start with is putting Atul Bose's, I'm just going to touch with you the questions that I'm going to ask you and we can discuss uh, that in detail. Yeah, tomorrow. hang on a sec. Yeah, just So a sec. Atul yeah. Bose's art in context. I mean, we, I mean, if we start from uh, the turn of the 19th century, we had Ravi Verma, a very famous portrait artist, right? Uh, yes. Some of the people in Bengal that were also known at that time uh, were, you know, uh, Sashi Hesh, somebody you're very familiar with, and, and, and a couple Oh, yes, of yes. You, you know, Pastanji Bamanji, Jeki uh, Ganguly, Shoshi right. Hesh. So they were all portrait, country. they were always, always portrait made, uh, because that, that was the commercial demand. And and then came the trio of Jamni Roy, Himen Majumdar, and Atul Bose, right? They were initially kind of the... That's uh, in the 1920s. 20s, that's right. So... Uh, I, I just wanted to get an understanding of how do you place portrait art? Uh, oh, portrait uh, itself. Portraits in itself uh, as part uh, of I'll Indian artist that. movement. Okay, uh, let me make a note. So portraits. Well, what I did in my art and nationalism is to talk about the great transformation, uh, artistic revolution that led to the introduction of art schools, art exhibitions, and the subjects, uh, portraiture, landscape, and finally, I call them, they are called history painting, basically historical uh, themes, uh, themes from the past, uh, also from literature. Uh, this is what happened in 19th century Europe where nationalism demanded history paintings. Okay. Portraits were very, uh, this was a new genre, but portraits were very important and they were being, I mean, it's a new style, you know, oil painting, oil portraits. You study the sitter, modify and produce a, uh, you know, portrait, which didn't exist before. Mughal portraits are wonderful, of course, but they have a very different kind. Uh, they were profile often, uh, and 
it was a kind of template. And uh, what they did was create these and have, a, as it were, an archive of these portraits, which they kept. And they used quite a lot. A lot of refinement, a lot of very beautiful things, but they were not what is known technically as academic portraits, portraits in the Western tradition going back to the Renaissance. So that's what, now portraiture became very important in India, right from, uh, Rai Verma was the great portrait painter, but there were others, Pestunji Bomanji, Shoshi Hesh, and so on. Um, so what you then had was nationalist Bengal school challenge representation, or you might say illusionism, things that look real. And uh, um, Abhanina Tagore, who was at the forefront, said no. What you do, even with portraits, you do it from your inner eye, mind's eye. And um, so it's very crude and materialistic. If you it's a try and copy the sitter. So this was going on, this whole controversy, Bengal school and so on. So in the 1920s, nationalism moved to the countryside and to the regions. And then you see the earlier history painting, uh, kind of nationalist, national allegories, uh, actually shared by not only Ravi Verma, but his adversary, Abhinath Tagore. But when you came to 1920s, these, this new generation of artists all over India challenged this. They said, no, what you have to do is, uh, you know, you now turn to the domestic, the everyday, the intimate, you know, this is something which was new. And Atul Bose, of course, uh, being a very fine portrait, but I mean, this was his skill. I mean, his draftsmanship, he had the uh, ability and, and the kind of uh, rudiments. And then he goes to Royal, Royal Academy and he learns the craft and he, he produces some of the very fine portraits. But even as a young man, when he was, you know, sort of student, he goes and suddenly sees uh, this great figure, um, Ashutosh Mukherjee, actually our neighbor, my great grandfather's friend. Uh, he's sitting there uh, with his loin cloth and having, uh, you know, uh, oil massage, Dalai Malaya, <laughs> with Shoshitil. And um, he said, young man, I, I suppose, what do you want? I have no time. I'll give you, what, 15 minutes or something. You have to do my sketch. If you can't, then out you go. But uh, it might be legend. I don't know. Uh, but it's very yeah, it's well documented legend. So it's, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He did the portrait. There's no question. Right. Uh, and he and Mukherjee also in the morning before he went to court, sat being <laughs> massaged with oil. Right. Like I or I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so just, no, I, I'm just uh, telling you all these anecdotes. My, uh, I heard that my uh, uh, grandfather, I mean, a great grandfather died. So Ashutam Mukherjee, every time, uh, every day when he used to come back from the court, he'd stop at our, in our home and uh, he would have Rashagola. He seems to had got a, he had a very healthy appetite. Uh -huh. uh, Shandesh, all this Bangali. Uh, I, 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 I take, the, I, I take a, a, a inspiration from him. So, uh, <laughs> so oh, well, <laughs> oh, aren't we all uh, proper Bengalis? Yes, yes right, right. That, that's absolutely right. So your great grandfather was. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar. Who was he exactly? Yeah, I mean, this is because I'm at the moment writing my life. So, right. what comes by? You know, he's called he's called Tripundeshwar Mitra. Okay. Very okay. difficult name. Nobody could pronounce it. So it's called, well-known as Tipen Mit, Mit, uh, Tipen Mitter. Okay. He's, um, his cousin was uh, Ramesh Mitter, you know, the first acting vice, uh, um, uh, chief justice of India. And the political controversy with Ripon. Oh, it's a very interesting story. He was a senior judge. 
So Ripon said, oh, we must have an Indian judge. It's high time, 1864 or something. And when the English uh, Chief Justice was going on furlough, you know, sorry, uh, I've lost you. Why did I lose you? No, I'm here, so I can hear wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. No, I want to get, oh, God. I have, uh, uh, you know, I have, have I? I can hear you perfectly, and I can see. No, 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 no. I want to see you. Oh, God. What did I do? You're working. You're absolutely fine. I mean, I can. Oh, how? How could I, how do I, I, ah, no, I hold I on the meeting. No, you're already in the meeting, so. So why am I not seeing you? You're, you've probably minimized the window. Oh, sorry, I've got it. Oh, I'm, stu uh, you know, I'm so bad with machine. Anyway, um, so, uh, he, but, so Ripple said that he should be the, uh, when uh, the European judge goes on furlough uh, to England, billet said uh, he should be the acting chief justice. The European judge immediately canceled his leave. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that typical? T tied to that was the other thing, the Ilbert bill, which the English and Indians to call the black, black bill. Uh, the, uh, what Ilbert did was to first time give rights to Indians to be on the jury when uh, there was a very serious case like murder. Mm -hmm. uh, of, of a European. Uh, Europeans used to often kick coolies and kick them to death. And they were always let off. So he wanted, um, you know, some Indians on the jury. Absolutely, it was terrible in Calcutta. Real revolution, I mean, the revolt broke out. All the English, they were absolutely, uh, and, and they started campaign against Ripon, against Ilbert. They were not entirely successful. So Ramesh Mitra was the first one. His uh, sons were also, uh, you know, barristers and, uh, you know, very successful ones. Uh, by my, my great grandfather decided not to follow the family. I've now traced my family that about four or five generations were in law business of different kinds. So uh, he said, no, I'll be an independent uh, business person. And he started his architecture and building uh, yeah. concern. So he was uh, invited to the commission to do the new um, uh, Lefton governor's house, which of course is not National Library. He built that. That was his thing. He also built the Alipur Central Jail, mm -hmm. as well as the Senate House in Calcutta. So he did a lot of, unfortunately, uh, he was laying the foundation of his uh, fortune, but he died at 42 from being totally, uh, you know, strong-willed and bad-tempered. Went out in the sun and he was told not to, he dropped dead. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, but one interesting part, finally, 1905 is the great uh, Swadeshi movement, you know uh, that, a partition of Bengal. Right. You, you know that. Absolutely, yeah. I, now it I ended really... in 1911, right? They stopped it in... Right. 19, they stopped the partition of Bengal in 1911, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, 1905 was the big explosion. Right. All over and India. 1906 was Abhinandath Bharat Mahatma. Yeah, yes, yes. But politically, 1905 is very important. Right. That's the date when uh, the whole partition of Bengal agitation broke out in mm -hmm. Bengal and elsewhere. Swadeshi movement. The first Swadeshi... And um, uh, at that time, I didn't realize Dipen Mitra and Ashton Mogherjee got together and founded a Mitra institution, which is where I went. Mm -hmm. so that was the school my grandfather founded with, uh, you know, Ashton Mogherjee. So that's interesting. Uh, I mean, it's a mixture, as you know, in all families, the mixture. My uh, Ramesh Mitra's uh, sons were very well European, uh, westernized. Well, I mean, they were very, they lived in um, at, ah, European part, you know, um, not Kamek Street, all, the, all those streets. Esplanade yeah. and Dalhousie. And, uh, no, no, in between Park Street and Park Street, okay. um, uh, Middle, Middleton Road, Kamek Street and so on. Very big houses. But my grand, great grandfather refused to wear European clothes. That's the other thing where he had, apparently he had uh, fallen out with his uh, father-in-law who was, um, uh, he was cousin of Kali Shingi, Kali Prashna Singh. You know the Kali Prashna Singh. You know the great. Not too far. So. 
Ah, you you have not got well up on Bengali. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's a great figure, 19th century figure, uh, Hutum Patan Naksha and uh, Mahabharata and so on. So, so uh, by his father, let's say, you must go dressed in European clothes when you're going to meet the governor, um, the lieutenant governor. So he said he refused to do that. So there was a rift in the family. But anyway, so he was very, very uh, deliberately Indian. Uh, I had a picture of him with his Albola sitting there with his uh, Kochana Dhuti and much of his... Uh, Kochana Dhuti is uh, traditional. Wonderful, just, yes, yes. Just going back a little Your bit. Your family must know all this. You, and, you uh, do. I'm sure... Uh, uh, I'm going to have a further uh, conversation with you after this. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, we can do uh, it at leisure. But yeah, go on. Right. So, so, you so, mentioned academic... Uh, uh, just quickly, you mentioned academic portrait. uh, portraiture. And okay. you said that, that is slightly different. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, the Ashutosh Mukherjee portrait, obviously it was made, you know, as the folklore goes, when the person was having a tail malish and all of that. But you look at the eyes, you look at the power, it's not, the portrait has the character of the individual. It is not just a realistic oh, portrait. Absolutely. I mean, that was great. The strength of... So of, just of Martha, one sec. So, and the reason I, I mentioned that is subsequently, you also have Abhinindranath Tagore's Mask series which is also uh, kind of, uh, if you listen to what his uh, grandsons uh, spoke about, all the masks are basically have a persona as well. So it's not just, it's, it's, it's a mask, it's, it's kind of got a personality, it has a, a certain quirk, it has a certain setting. So I'm just wondering if you could put academic portraiture, uh, then the 1922 uh, Ashutosh Mukherjee work, which is not just a realistic portrait, there's a lot more happening. And then of course, Abhinindranath, I mean, uh, and yeah. Go on. So what, what, what is your question? No, the question is, I mean, what I do feel is that uh, uh, Atul Bose's portraiture is not just a simple academic, realistic portraiture. He has done a lot more in that particular work. Uh, no, you see, I know what you're saying. Well, first of all, Abhinav's masks are very interesting, but they're not portraits as such. They're not portraits. And right. others as well. There were, you know, academic portraiture, uh, pro portrait painters like Pestan Nibomanji, you can take as a very good example. Very good. But they didn't have that particular flair. And I've called this, you know, delicate and uh, also to be able to capture a particular, you know, feeling, expression, personality. You already see this in Bengal Tiger. Uh, and let me make a note. Uh, the reason I say that, you know, you say expression is, you know, like expression, like uh, uh, increasing uh, the focus on a particular feature. So now we have a portrait, Ashutosh Mukherjee, an important, powerful figure, you know, uh, looks very realistic, his mustache and everything. But the overall impression is something that completely exudes his personality. Clearly, he's eyes weren't like that when he was having an oil massage, right? So, uh, so I mean, the, the artist in the 15 second or uh, 15 minutes as the folklore glows is able to bring out uh, uh, something, you know, it's almost, you know, it's not, it's not realism. It's almost expressionist. It's almost like, you know, he's, he's brought out a very characteristic in the uh, personality in, and done it so well and so fluently that you don't really think about it till you think about it, I guess, you know. But he had a flair, he had a, a native talent, there's no question. But also later training developed that talent because one thing when you think about this and I've always thought of this, that it's a question of Indian tradition versus Western tradition, etc. A lot of the painters and artists in India, even academic painter, I feel they, they were not able to capture that. It's that specific thing, even including not only expression, but the skin, the, the texture. And when you look at uh, my, you know, my favorite is that portrait, which was uh, yeah. Jani. Uh, but the drawing is the best one. You know, it's extraordinarily good because it's specific. It's a particular person, real person. And how do they actually look? How do they express? What is their expression? And that is, even with the nudes, you have this very specific thing with, uh, I feel that, with Atul Bose. His nudes are 
a few there, there aren't that many, but few. And actually I realized that Newt from the back was many years ago when I was very young, saw in the Sunday Statesman had been reproduced a long time ago. You know, so those paintings have been produced, uh, but I mean, him in Majumdar, for example, a lot of his paintings are from the back as well, right? So- Oh, from... okay. Now we come to him in Majumdar. Uh, can I make a contrast? Sure. Atul Bose says portraits and nudes were based on accurate draw drawing. Very, very accomplished. Heaven was a great characteristic and very important, this ability to capture the sensuous aspect of Bengali women particularly. They're, again, they're not simply a general, it's a general statement in a lot of artists make general general statement. In in European art, it's the particular that's important. And um Vijayad, of course, also. So you see where we go back to the idea of the intimate and the immediate. Portrait, nudes, you take the object, you take the person, whatever, and you do it. And you don't think about wider issues. The, the intimacy uh, and the uh, ex the personality that and the softness, as you say, that comes out from Himen's uh, and, and Atul Bose's work. Absolutely. Uh, and you have academic portraiture on one side, uh, which is a bit more, you know, realistic without that kind of intimacy or softness. Yeah, but even they're general. realistic, they're general. They're general. They're general, they're, they're general statements. The reason, how would you uh, put these uh, uh, portraits and, and nudes with, with a soft touch in, in relation to the whole discourse on modernism? Uh, where do people fall? Because up to ah, This is an interesting question. Okay. Uh, uh, tomorrow, are you going to uh, ask me this question? I, I'm setting up a plan. Uh, oh, last lovely. Then, then I can answer them very clearly. Yes. Well, the thing is that I mentioned that early academic painting from the 19th century and Bengal school, these were in locked in, in a kind of a struggle uh, for the authentic, within quotes, authentic expression. What is authentic Indian art? That seems to have been the big debate. These people, Jamila as well, Atulba, Jamila, uh, and Heman Majunda, they were looking at it very differently, you see. But here, there is another thing. Modernism comes in India at this time. And of course, you have three great figures. To me, they're the, well, one is Rabindranath Tagore and Shantini Ketan together. Other is Amrita Shergil, and third is Jamini Roy. Now, if you look carefully, they began to really respond to, for, can I say formalism? A modern modern art is formalist. Mm -hmm. You have quoted the term before, formal modernism, so formal modernism. I mean, you have- Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it means is that it's a cons much more concerned with line and uh, shapes and planes and not with the subject as opposed to academic art, which is very specific. So during this period, formalist modernism is very powerful in India, of course, from the 1920s onwards. But you have this other tradition. That's, I, to me, it's very important. It's not called modern in the big M, capital M, but it is, everyday subject, intimacy, uh, these are contemporary uh, concerns. And that way they are very much part of that whole milieu. And that, that's an interesting issue. You know, there are other painters and sculptors. David Persia writes a very little later on, but about the same time, then goes on to develop sculpture and much more in the forties and paintings. He was a very good, Portrait, I mean, portrait painter, but that wasn't his main interest. I mean, his interest was historic or rather um, heroic themes 
of laborers and so on. So each painter has their own conception and particular aim. I would say that um, Atul Bursa's aim was uh, much more trying to represent a human being. How do I do it? It's a real human being sitting in front to be not a generalized uh, you know uh, object because you know uh, in art if i may just quickly digress in art you start with a schema <coughs> or a general simplified image <coughs> art all over the world does that but european painting and portraiture representation uh, it created this new idea of modifying the original schema of the simpler image. And that is the tradition. Othul Bush was superb at it. And he also tried to uh, talk about in verified perspective and all sorts of other things. So the, the perspective, uh, there is a work, of course, titled The Sphinx, uh, which is uh, three uh, women sitting in a triangle. I believe that's a study of a perspective on which he's written a book as well. Uh, it's a very small book, in fact. Uh, I've got it. I've got it, yes. It's, it, it, it will be auctioned with the law. I mean, it's a small book. It's, I'm not even sure that it has any value. But uh, but I don't find too many... Um, I mean, is, is this a, a result of his formalist training in London? Because I don't find too many artists talking about perspective and even in, in inventing a perspective graph, uh, which I... You know why? Yeah, it's a simple question. You know why? No, it's... Wait simply because this is part of European Renaissance art. Mm. Uh, you know, light and shade, single point perspective, four shortenings. These are the tricks of the trade. And your modernists, Bengal school, they were all against it. They, uh, so, so, often yeah. they deliberately destroyed perspective, single point. Perspective, by that we mean single point perspective. Right you know, ending a distant horizon, yeah. Right, at a point. Right, so yeah. the, the interesting question, uh, I mean, segue into what you mentioned. So we have Abhinandranath, and uh, obviously uh, then there's Atul Bose, and then there's the other Bose, other Bose, Nandalal Bose, uh, yes. kind of almost at the same time, if you may. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, of course. Uh, one in Shantanigetan and one in Calcutta. Yeah, uh, yeah. Doing completely different things. Oh, yes. Uh, likely one Not all Boses are the same. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, but one likely, Atul Bose likely has a commercial career, whereas Nandlal Bose is more about Shantaniketan, art for art's sake. I mean, uh, uh, you know, completely different. I mean, you have any comments on how these two different uh, paths evolve? I mean, we have the Calcutta artists doing very different things. John Leroy, completely different. I mean, you. Uh, uh, completely different uh, discovery. Him and Majumdar, completely different route. Uh, Atul Bose, portraiture, you know, landscapes and everything. And then we have Shantli Gate. We almost have two very diverse schools or thoughts or completely, and they all come from Abhinandranath and, you know, Government College of Art, Jami a student, but yet so far apart. I mean, uh, can you? I mean, uh, can I say that, look in my book, it's all described there, uh, Triumph for Modernism. I I've talked about all this, why? But I can just tell you that one thing which I haven't discussed, uh, simple reason, uh, Nandalal had a proper job when uh, Rabindranath asked him to take over Kalabhavan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he never had to worry about his daily, uh, you know, rice and dal as it were. Othulus had to think about that. You know, his, his, uh, you know, initially, Jamini Rai, Uthul Bursa, and Helen Bursa had to, uh, for problems trying to make a living. Of course. I mean, we so all know about Jamini Rai's Kenya struggle and, you know, extreme poverty, etc. And then, then he finally got success after 10 years. And some of the early works done on, you know, thin cotton cloth, they almost say that, or the family says that it's, you know, the wife's sorry that was reused and all of that. And oh, yeah, yeah, he of course. went through a lot. I mean, uh, but the point is that they were commercial, whereas Shantanigetan artists were, as you say, on a salary and therefore, you know, maybe prone to uh, 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 
you know, just uh, daydream and no, research. I, and I wouldn't say these three were commercial. They were, they were trying to make a living, living but that's right. not being commercial. Not commercial. That's right. Sorry, it's not decorative. It's trying to make a living. Um, okay. Um, now, Atul Bos obviously had a huge career from the 1920s when you know Ashutosh Mukherjee. Then he went to Royal Academy and he did a lot of the portraits. Um, one of the things we have noticed, if I look at the art databases, is uh, the auction databases that you know hardly three works have come out in the auction market. I mean, you have known Sanjeet uh, and the family for a long time. I mean, uh, it is, uh, it, it feels, I mean, why do you think the artist has not been that much? We are hoping that our catalog and our, our chat, you know, et cetera, all that changes that, but it just seems that an important artist of, you know, the 1920s, 30s and 40s has kind of uh, been a little out of mind, out of sight, uh, uh, out of sight, out of mind, because most of his important work, like all the portraits are in the Parliament House, Raj Bhavan, Calcutta, London, and they're never going to be sold, right? Because they're all government property. And the family, I guess, held on to all the artworks and never, you know, disposed very, very little. I mean, what, do you have any feedback or, or any comments on the right approach that should, the family should have taken or uh, uh, maybe there should have been more exhibitions? And, and of course, what is also Sad in all this is that Atul Bose had such an important role to play in the setting up of the uh, society. Fine, fine arts, fine yes. arts with Rana Mukherjee. And with Rana Mukherjee, that. yes. And 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 of course there are many photographs and, and all that with, with her. But you know all that history seems to be lost. I mean, uh, I mean I'm just trying to understand why Atul Bose is not that big, uh, slightly bigger name or the recognition as I think he would have normally or should have. Uh, he I'm should sure. he. He fell between the cracks. He fell between the cracks. Yeah, because, well, you know, first it was Bengal school, very strong. By the time he started to, you know, you know, become better known, uh, arise modernism, much more strong, uh, and then on to uh, progressive artists of Bombay and Calcutta group. Can you just so, repeat? so you said Bengal school, and then what modernism did you say? Uh, the uh, you know, Calcutta, um, uh, 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 you know, a group of artists uh, uh, in, in the 40s. But the Calcutta, you mean like Paritosh Sen and some of those other guys? Yes, the, yes. They were very important and they were political. They were much more, actually, power, more powerful. And they made a lot no, but of... So uh, that, that brings into... I think, I think you would include Chitta Prasad in, in, in that category as well. I mean, uh, no, no, no. It's all so many different aspects. Um, Chitta Prasad was part of the communist movement, right? And a very powerful figure, but he was producing, uh, not in a bad sense, propaganda art. He mm. needed to for the people's movement, a mm. uh, struggle. Yes, of course, and it's a different trajectory. Zainil Abedin, one of the most talented uh, artists of that group, uh, and um, Otul Bush was not part of that. He was seen as more conservative simply because he sorry, con con concentrated on a kind of academic art which went back to the Renaissance. He, he actually studied carefully and this was out of fashion. Mm. So when I uh, took, when I did my art uh, life drawing, uh, he and Ratin Murtra would stand there and you know, they, they, they were uh, formally in charge of the class, although they didn't do much actual teaching, they let people do what they wanted. And that's when I first met him uh, through Rani Mukherjee. And, uh, you know, through the, uh, my mother was quite involved with the academy, the children's drawing class, and so on. So, yeah, yeah. And he was such a self effacing figure. figure. He never spoke, uh, I mean, I have to tell you. Um, confidently, Rana Mukherjee was such a, <laughs> she was a tyrant and a very strong personality. Oh God, she treated everybody like her. I've you seen know, an interview it, of her and um, when she was much older, I could make out the vibe. I mean, it's like... Um, um, how old was she when you saw her? No, she was very old. She was like, uh, this, this was, uh, she must have been 70 at least. Uh, no, but then she was getting on. But when I knew her in the 50s and 60s, and just up to uh, 62, uh, she was in her 
prime, absolutely going around every charging run. Uh, <laughs> but, but the more I and the model, hey, both a memo stick and keep up. And when I mean, she had this kind of very, <laughs> of course, the famous <laughs> portrait of Ranu Mukherjee by Atul Bose, uh, which I have myself been to the uh, Society of Fine Arts multiple times and never been able to view it. Uh, no, you know why? That, that's the other sad thing. Rana Mukherjee is a tyrant, but she did a lot for the. I mean, the Academy was her love child, and she looked after it so well. Uh, I mean, and as soon as she died, I knew that. Uh, I mean, the, the daughters, for I mean, Nita and uh, Gita, because they all died, and the son, there's nothing left, a direct, you know, uh, probably grandchildren. And um, yes, absolutely that. You know, they talk, well, I, this is what happens with these uh, public thing and the CPM government took charge of it. They didn't do a damn thing. The only rare period, the man called Colonel Das, I think. But he, he was doing very well, careful. And um, it was then the uh, chair or president was, uh, you see, Omyo Guptu. And it was running well. Omiya Gupta, as my, uh, you know, Mesha was saying, they died suddenly, you know. Uh, he, he would be one of my grand uncles too, so as, as we know. Are, are you related to the Gupta? Yeah. yeah, do, you, yeah. Like, you know, do you know Oluka? Oluka is my cousin. I have heard that name, but uh, yeah, Omiya Gupta, okay. I have definitely heard the name. That my mother's side is Gupta, so. Okay, so there you are. In Calcutta, this is the thing. <laughs> it's like two degrees of separation. Uh, but no, so the, but, but a bit sad because I, I liked uh, Omio, you know, very nice. And he, he also uh, invited me to Academy and this man I met, he was doing good work, but then he resigned. And it also, as it happened with all Bengali enterprise, Geje <laughs> Gal, just, Sank in the morass of Bengal. Yeah, you mentioned Zain al Abedin. Uh, so one of the important lots in this is a study of uh, uh, the famine. There's, there's 13 works uh, uh, as a single. You, you have sent me sort of lo lovely stuff, but right. you know that the great ones are, of course, uh, Zain al Abedin, and some very good ones of Chitta Prashad. Yes. Right. I mean, what, what would your feedback be on the ones by, I mean, uh, the studies by uh, Atul Bose, the, the family? They're good. They're good, uh, well-observed uh, sketches, but I wouldn't say they're, they're the ones I, I, for him, I mean, with regard to his work, I would rather go for these very sensitive portraits. What, but what about the landscapes? In fact, the landscapes also appear to use the word... They're, they're interesting. They're, they're interesting, but right. they belong to okay. tradition. And it does go back, they, they go back to J.P. Ganguly and various other There's a slight things. distinction. If you look at the uh, uh, the views from Kanchenjunga, I mean, if you yeah. put that painting up on the wall, you almost see like the sunlight hitting the... Uh, yeah, because he had a tremendous sense of, he, he was a skilled painter, of but, course. But it's not just the, it's, it's like you can almost see the sunlight hitting the peaks and also the clouds. I mean, and the family themselves say that it's as if the, you know, it's like cotton balls have been stuck on the canvas or something like that. It's it's so the clouds are so you know like fuzzy, so 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 real. I mean, like, you, you, you have sent me the uh, painting, the haven't you? I'll have another uh, look yeah. at it. Right. I mean that that I mean it's it's a huge work too. It's a three feet by two feet work, which is quite unusual mm -hmm. for uh, 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 the size uh, of artworks uh, uh, that are out there. Um, so I mean, you know, and and it's. Even that softness of the sensitivity, it's, it's not just, I think, not just the portraits, but also uh, 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 one can see that in uh, his landscapes. And I think you have also referred to this as, as you call it, the, uh, the, uh, the local naturalists or... Uh, 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 oh, but then you have in Bombay as well, similar people, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, what, do, what do you call it, natural light, you know, what was... Um, uh, so when talking they, about naturalism, they, I guess I'm referring to the... Uh, Barbizon concept, uh, uh, Barbizon period that we have discussed, uh, yes, uh, yes. where uh, a lot of the, you know, it wasn't about showing a very fancy uh, uh, landscape, it was just showing, you know, Gopalpur by the sea as it is. Uh, no, because they were very careful, you know, sort of very precise uh, subject and you don't go beyond that. 
uh, very much so. No, but th this is also you find in, uh, among a whole lot of the Marathi painters in Bombay at that time, the plein air, I call the plein air is, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a movement going around at that time, very interesting. And the other person who was a renegade from <clears throat> Bengal school, uh, K. Venkatappa, uh, if you look at my triumph of modernism, one of the finest, uh, you know, landscapes of Uti, he used to go early in the morning and sit there and study for day, the three in the morning, and there was nobody there around. He was entirely on his own. It's a wonderful kind of sense of meditation and uh, it, it's extraordinary painting. So yes, it's a different age. And these are the alternative to modernism. Right, and uh, Partha, the last question for today, uh, and we'll carry it on tomorrow, is I just wanted to discuss the question of, uh, uh, you know, the slightly uh, commercial question related to rarity. I mean, I do find that a lot of the artists, for example, in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, I mean, the kind of artworks that they made, uh, like even Jamini Roy, I mean, he was mostly prolific, I think, after he became successful, which is around the end of the World War II, you know, the, that the next two decades was very prolific. But pre-19, mid, mid 40s, uh, a lot of these artists, you know, is, I mean, they weren't big producers of art. Uh, and I think that point is missed out by many. So, I mean, and, and, I, and, I, and I apologize for the commercial point, but I'm trying to make a statement that you know, we, here we have as a pristine estate of Atul Bose coming for the you know first time, and the family has I know possessively held this. I'm not sure if you're aware. I had to chase Sanjit Bose for like four years. Uh, no, of course, of course, uh, uh, sure. Four years. I have gone to his house, walked out in anger. Then he calls me up and says, "You're getting angry. Don't get angry." This that. <laughs> uh, I can't tell no, you the kind no, of anecdotes. You know, Indian uh, collectors, you have or uh, families. You have to be patient. No, I mean, I, I mean, cannot tell you the amount of anecdotes and, you know, all. all uh, I know the feeling. You know, you I, mean, I went to Calcutta just to meet him. No, sorry, not today. Can you come tomorrow? I said, no, I can't come tomorrow <laughs> because I've been back today. I mean, it took me four years. Uh, it, it wasn't easy. But, I mean, do you think that somehow these rare works have been overlooked because rarity has, in an effect, been negative for the artist? I mean, if they had produced, you know, uh, 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 2,000 works or 3,000 works, I mean, maybe they would have been more better known or more available than, you know, uh, versus Atul was the entire state, we have around 50, 60 works. I mean, it's nothing. And that's the, that's essentially it. Other than a couple of mementos that the family has kept, there's nothing with the family anymore. So, uh, um, Pat, I don't know what you think, but I personally feel it is not that. These are political issues. Why someone, you know, uh, just is kind of uh, totally ignored or uh, falls under the radar. That's uh, not just because of the quantity. Uh, I mean, uh, there have been artists who have produced a lot, but they, they weren't really treated. You see, so th that sort of thing. You see politics. Uh, Allah, Allah Box, for instance, you Allah, know this. Yeah. Muslim. Yeah. He printed an enormous amount, but he wasn't at all uh, given any recognition until later. So it's a complex question, partly because they, nobody saw Atul Bose's work outside, very few people. So as you right. say, you had to re re recover him from... And when he was... Uh, when I met him, <clears throat> saw him and met him, Hardly, he he was, yeah, a sort of lonely figure. Hardly anybody talked about his work, except Radha Mukherjee was appreciative, I must say. Yeah, so that, that was still the 60s, I guess. So we have the important uh, uh, person who used to uh, encourage art, or was the, you know, Radha Mukherjee, you know, was his good friend and all of that. Uh, so after Radha Mukherjee, I think he completely went out of sight, out of mind, because even in Calcutta, there wasn't the uh, uh, the kind of uh, you know the support system or the uh, the person you know uh, uh, like Ramadhanat Tagore you know gone, Ranu Mukherjee gone. I mean, Chant Niketan being involved in politics. I mean, the whole art scene changed completely, and I think that's probably the death knell for 
uh, in terms of visibility of people like Atul Bose, I mean, uh, their main promoters were. Yeah. But you know, it was a different age. 47, <clears throat> the refugee influx and other things, whole uh, uh, Calcutta society changed completely. Uh, language change. So old Bengal Renaissance was no longer there, so it was dying. And the last generations are already gone. You see, so it's a new world, new uh, thing. It, it, everything was swept away by during that period. In some cases, very well-known figures like Jamie Roy were reassessed and became important. The Jamini Roy is very, I mean, I, I, I am a big uh, fan of uh, Jamini Roy. I mean, I almost, uh, the kind of art he produced in the, uh, you know, from the 30s was so different. And we've discussed this, right? I mean, almost like uh, Mondrian reducing the line. You, you read, read it, haven't you, about what I say? Right. <clears throat> and, and, He's very important and world figure. And I've been uh, publishing on him as, as far as, Cairo and, you know, uh, Berlin and everywhere. I mean, he's my great example of how uh, modernism outside <clears throat> the West can be equally important. You see, sharing mod ideas of modern, modern, it's not that they are sa same or similar. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever talk about Jaminra uh, kind of deriving from Picasso, which is rubbish. He, his position has to do with coming to terms with modern age, a capitalist colonialism. Yeah, I mean, so, his, his deriving from anybody is, is, is rubbish. I mean, his creativity is uh, as much and more than Picasso or Cubism or anything like that. I mean, it's, I just find that we have completely ignored our own, you know, uh, mm. brilliant, you know, child. And uh, we rather look at, you know, Western inspired or, you know, some other. No, no. You know, we can't use those criteria to study our artists who are very good, valid in their own terms. But you can't compare with Picasso, he has one off, you know. <laughs> no, you're saying Picasso was, what, 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 repeat that again, sorry. I mean, he, he is absolute pure genius, I'm sorry. Absolutely. No, I, mean, but his, when... I mean, if you, have you seen his range of work? No, I've, I've, I've actually. It's extraordinary, I mean, that, that, but why should we compete with that? Jaminra was very important being at a certain stage, certain uh, time and space, which I talk about. And I have always argued that he's a very important painter, but because it's quite separate. <laughs> Sorry, we have to also be- I think it's the, probably the, the Bengali uh, uh, thing in me that I've- uh, 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 I know, no, <laughs> but you see, when, I mean, I've been dab, you know, doing this business for so many years. And I, I am a painter, very little though, and now I do. And I studied, I responded, I taught European art, history. And when I see the talent, the extraordinary sort of, it's not, I don't know why, because the historic, uh, historic sort of situation, how a lot of European painters, were, they had that advantage probably, I don't know. It's a very difficult issue. I mean, it's my personal it's taste. Little, I'm, not, I'm not going to argue about it. No, but I, I think it's a little bit cultural. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, uh, this is just a general question on art collecting, <laughs> art patronage. Uh, uh, we obviously, during uh, the, you know, the princely states or, uh, uh, you know, or a major period in the past, there's a lot of patronage in arts and jewelry and, you know, India was a big, uh, producer then and uh, uh, but it seems that you know from the 20th century onwards um, is it true can one make that statement that a lot more uh, uh, exploration has probably been done in the west and maybe it's a uh, well it's you know this is a great problem there is an imbalance I mean however much <coughs> I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm one of the critics of western you know dominance and, and western knowledge but I can't deny that it's just it so happened historic reasons probably I, I don't think that's innate talent probably but nonetheless 
for the last 300 years, what the West produced was so extraordinary. We stand on sort of foundations of that, you know, those thing and that you can't deny. I mean, you look at science, you look at arts, you look at every field. Why I can't explain it. it's a whole lot of things. But we didn't feel bad about it. Uh, we uh, in India, artists were, did certain things which were very, very important in their own context. And that's what we should understand and look at. And, and there again, there are very good artists and there are bad artists. You see, it's a question of judgment as well. Lastly, I mean, I should have put this question earlier, and I will do that tomorrow. And this is the last question, Parth, I will let you off this, uh, is that, you know, the, the, the early academic nudes, uh, we have obviously documented, you know, uh, Amrita Shergill, you know, in the 1930s, doing the same. Of course, she was uh, being educated in France. And then we have Hemant Majumdar uh, uh, doing his uh, Bengali women, you know, uh, sari series. And then... We have this Royal Academy work and other sketches, uh, study of nudes and all that. How do you place that in, in, in context? Because there's not too much of this produced, uh, uh, nude studies being produced in India. Uh, you know, it, it seems to be a little, I mean, would you, how much importance or not would you ascribe to this? I haven't quite put my finger around it. You mean academic nudes? Academic nudes and nude studies, and, you know. Uh, uh, no, it's not, it, uh, figure studies were done but they were not like in the West. I mean, uh, Shergill is a different uh, issue. Uh, he, she got a, a wonderful training in Paris and her needs were great, brilliant, you know, figure drawings and painting, figure paintings mainly. But um, it started with the art school and they began to study human figure. Again, I have some very fine uh, nudes in, uh, Time for modernism, uh, Bombay, at the time of Solomon. Check that. I mean, there, mm. I have quite a few. I didn't rep reproduce all of them. There's some very fine ones which I took photos of, mm -hmm. and uh, so it, uh, there is that tradition. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I feel that Atul Bush had a certain sensibility which was quite unique. I mean. I have no doubt because when I look at the line and I draw and my great interest is drawing and human figure. I've been obsessed with human figure. And then I stand before him and I think, gosh, what a, what an eye, what a, a touch. Yes. Uh, sadly, you know, that way he wasn't given much exposure, but yes. So these are a few, but they're still very precious. So what I want to do, so when you, <coughs> when, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> um, at the auction, so you would keep notes of all the uh, people who would buy the stuff. So it's an online auction. So people register and then they bid and some people can choose. Yeah, but to do you have all, all your, de all their details? Yes, the auction is still another 20 days away or so. Uh, it's on the 26th. Yeah, because I think that it's very important to know where they go. Sometimes, oh, they, they... Uh, of course, I mean, uh, uh, we'll be receiving a check from that person, right? So we would definitely know. Yeah, but you know, sometimes uh, you don't uh, like, in some of the auctions, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, European uh, collector collected a lot of Dhurandar and he disappeared. Uh, they're reappearing, but I have no idea where they went. And things like that. Well, I'm actually hoping that, uh, um, you know, I, I worked with the family to really uh, uh, come uh, and please ask this question tomorrow as well. I worked with the uh, family to really, uh, you know, all the sketches, uh, they, they're essentially a no reserve auction. So they start bidding at a, a, a pittance. No, yeah, but uh, don't, don't, uh, is there no reserve? That's, no, that would be a pity. No, 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 don't, but, but, no, no, for the paperworks, for the sketches. Yeah. Reserve means they all start at 10,000 rupees and then they go higher than that. That's nothing, yeah. That's nothing, that's right. So, uh, and then the uh, canvases, of course, have got the uh, estimates and reserves. The, the nude has got an estimate of uh, uh, 16 lakhs, I believe. And the Kanchenjunga has got an estimate. Including sketches or not? No, just that one 
canvas is 16 lakhs and the new it is around 10 lakhs that's the reserve price that's the starting amount it can yeah. go at you know much higher than that yeah what I i'm see. hoping is that you know uh, we've worked very hard with the family to kind of uh you know i explain to them that look this is an auction it's about documenting the legacy but let's make sure that you know the reserves are you know reasonable and so uh, frankly i'm hoping that the entire lot gets picked up by a museum yeah. And, and oh, that would be so clear. wonderful. But do you think it will? I, I, I can't say till till it happens. I mean, you know, uh, I, I can't say till it happens. So, but yeah, I'm, because I'm they're, they're not national treasure. They're not national treasure, so they can go outside uh, okay. as well. But I'm outside hoping they go often. They're looked after very well. So no, in the, in the private museums in India also uh, look look. I get another, for instance. Another, the, I don't that's know. right. So uh, there's, there's or or uh, uh, Ashish. Sorry, repeat that. Ashish, Ashish is not a museum. Uh, he's he's a. Uh, well, I mean, he's, right. So, but I'm hoping that it goes to a museum and uh, uh, you know. He looks after the stuff very well. He does. He does. He does. Uh, um, all right, Martha. So uh, thank you very much for the trial. Oh, great. <laughs> and uh, we'll have the actual call tomorrow. And at the end, I will allow questions from a couple of questions from outsiders, three or four questions. But sure. I, I will keep it muted because, you know, in my past experience, I've had like uh, uh, people just butt in and refuse to, you know, give up and ask questions like, you know, uh, wh uh, wh when did. Uh, about Jamni Roy, do you think she was a good painter? You know, they ask lots of funny questions sometimes. So, uh, 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 listen, uh, but, but in the, that you can control. No, no, absolutely. So, so we will uh, control with, that. With Zoom, you must mute, you know, when we talk. No, absolutely. So this was a trial, in fact. So uh, you, there are participants in the Zoom call. Uh, they are all. They shouldn't muted. be able to They're, until you allow them. They shouldn't. They are, they are all yeah. muted, and they will not be allowed to speak. That is what the test was all about. So. Oh, lovely. And um, then they will ask question. And uh, would you be able to monitor so that they don't go on? Uh, yeah, you, you should be there. Yeah, no, the questions they will ask, they will send to me and I will ask the question. They will not be oh, lovely. No, that's much better. That is, I, I realize. Yeah, I realize that. <laughs> so oh, you uh, have to have control. I mean, in these cases, it's, otherwise it gets very. I, I, I realize <laughs> that. So uh, sounds sounds good. Thank you very much. And no, uh, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, so what time does it start tomorrow? Same time it started today. Uh, you will get another email which will say the same things and it will say, you know, uh, 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 the same things as it said. And you, as you did today, you just log on and that's it. Okay, so it'll go for an hour, hour and a half? Or? Hour, hour and 15 minutes. And then okay, that's, oh, that sounds good. All the, okay, so the, the, I mean, I think it, it was a good uh, discussion. That should be all right. I mean, yeah, I think you know. So the goal is, um, you know, at the end of the day, the discussion is about art. It's about modernism and you know, nineteen twenties, thirties, forties. It's about Atul Bose and you know how I, I really want to stress that how you know he was. People, you know, people just say academic, and then they get, and then they lose interest. But academic was like. You know, Ravi Verma was academic, you know, uh, not the mythology maybe, but a lot of the portraits that he did was a were academic, you know, people standing in front of you and that's it. You know, and you yeah, say yeah, the, yeah. Gen the gender. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. Atul Bose, I don't think you can classify like Ashutosh Mukherjee's portrait as anything academic. I mean, no, is... but you see, academic art is a very big category. There's so many different aspects. Yeah, but the, the, when they say academic, they just mean, you know, realistic. In a very, very pejorative way. In a very pejorative way, and yeah, but you don't want that. You don't. No, that's not. I. I don't agree with that. But anyway, yeah. No, but you may not agree with that. But the point is that Atul Bose has been categorized with that pe pejorative uh, 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 classification. Oh, academic painter. Uh, academic yeah. Academic painter, and I don't think that is correct. You see, that's that's the. No, basic. but they would then they, they would say, "Oh, modern artist." <laughs> no, but you see, modernism has many parts. You know, I and. Know. Uh, I know. Uh, it's it's not a black and white, you know. I mean, uh, 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 you know, like suddenly uh, there was somebody uh, waved a magic wand and oh, there was modernism. It, you know, it, it was a transitional effect. It was a movement. Of, people kept chipping on and on, on. That is how modernism came by. And Atul Bose is an important participant in that Indian modernism of twenties and thirties, and his contribution is there. 
but he just gets you know lost in the cracks you know and and no, but he, you know he has been he had been forgotten uh, and i remember him you know standing there no idea of what he had done you know i mean he but was that's how all artists are i mean you know a lot of artists don't have no idea what you know uh, uh, like how important they, i mean that's the humility right i mean that's uh, no, but you see, I mean, Rotin Maitre was an interesting painter, yeah, sure. Uh, but I would say Otubov was much more uh, an important painter. No, this was extremely important. I mean, uh, but he'd not seen that way, you see. Well, again, that's, that's hopefully all of these discussions will change that. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the gist of it. So, uh, and they were, in fact, comparing Atulbos to, uh, I mentioned to you, uh, I shouldn't mention the, uh, uh, Atulbos and um, who's the contemporary artist, the Bengali artist uh, with an S. Um, uh, when? Uh, I had this conversation with you many weeks ago. Uh, anyway, the name will come to me, but. Sorry, well, which period? I'm, I'm sorry, the name will come to me. I mean, he's a politically uh, connected painter who's, who's done a lot of, uh, uh, um, it starts with an S, I just forget, I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. But uh, I mean, the point is that he's, I mean, there's, there's hardly a book on Atul Bose. There has, there's actually one book published by the Society of Fine Arts, which again, it's impossible to obtain. And little documentation, no representation in the auction space three artworks being sold in the last 20 years, partly because the family also just, you know, you know, were very possessive. I mean, they love their father, you know, Sanjit Bose is like, he has, he has tears pouring down when he, you know, uh, sees his father's oh, photograph and all of it. Really? Okay. He's very sentimental, you know, and, and, and extremely possessive. And I think it's only work, you know, not to the, uh, to the detriment of, uh, uh, the, you know, the artists need exposure, right? I mean, uh, of course, of course. And I hope your auction will <clears throat> create that space. Well, you saw the catalog, right? So there's a lot of archival material. Yeah. There's, there's You're no not going to have a hard copy, would you? Of course, we'll have a hard copy. So uh, it's being printed. Uh, right I, would, I would hope to, yes. No, 100%. No, no, 100%. <laughs> and uh, so the, the whole idea of the catalog was that it, it gets used not just as an auction catalog, Along with lot number price, lot number price, but as a as a research uh, uh, thing, you know. So again, I, I've put in there a lot of the newspaper articles. Like nobody knows a lot of his portraits hang in Parliament House or Raj Bhavan. I mean, yes, it's completely no, I, nobody knows. No, because he was perhaps also a bit self-effacing. Probably, I think. And, yeah. and Nandalal was very much part of a very strong militant group, so he was much more, you know. Chaltaniketan was Rabindranath Tagore. They had a lot, they had a lot more voice. I mean, it was a collective voice. It was a collective big, movement. Big voice. Big, big yeah. voice. Big voice. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he had also, lots of students. I mean, Otul Bose taught at the government art school, but you know, it was absolutely terrible. Every few months there was a strike. There were fights with Mukulde. Mukulde. <laughs> Mukulde uh, was quite the character, it seems. Mukulde fought with many. Uh, uh, oh, God. And he was so funny. Um, I met him and he was, he wanted a copy of my book and then he said he would, he'd say, I didn't give it to him, watch that. <laughs> and so he didn't, he didn't say much, but apparently he threatened uh, a researcher whose book on the three Tagores, uh, he threatened him with a gun or something. <laughs> a real colorful figure, really. Um, and he did some good work. I mean, his uh, lithographs were very good. But he and Otulbus absolutely hated each other. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure. In fact, towards the end, there was some letter exchange between uh, uh, Rabindranath, uh, Rabindranath Tagore and Mukulde regarding some uh, uh, something. I mean, Mukulde was an interesting character. I mean, it's clear about that. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, Partha, it's been uh, uh, nice chatting with you. We will chat tomorrow. Okay. So, but you okay. understand the general direction that we're going in, I guess. So, uh, yeah. uh, so I'll be ready and uh, yeah, absolutely, no problem. And I'll open it a few minutes before. Right. So yeah, that, we'll, we'll open that tomorrow. Be, and, yeah, so I'm-, um, I'm uh, It would be 3.15 here, right? Right, that's right. Okay. And what's the time right now in London? Uh, exactly uh, 3.30. 3.30.
Okay. So the uh, the call will start at two thirty. Yes. And so you will open at two fifteen. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes. Okay. I thought I heard three in there. So two. Oh no 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 two fifteen. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Chat with you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right then. Lovely. Okay. Bye. See you.